What's going on everybody? Hope everybody's doing well. So for today's video, it's a little bit different. Yeah, but we're gonna talk about cowbell beaters and why they matter. Yeah, different, but still kind of crazy. Y'all already know what day it is. It's Tutorial Thursdays. Welcome to A Percussion Life. My name is Eric Perez. If you are new to the channel, thank you for stopping by. And if you haven't already, please hit that like, subscribe, and notification button so you can find out whenever I upload. And to all my day ones, man, thank you so much for all the love, continued support, to the comments, sharing, just, just hitting me up, man. I, I, I honestly love this community. I'm so appreciative of all of you guys, man, and, and just, just keeping making this channel grow, man. Just, just love it. So today, I actually wanted to talk about a, a, a topic that i uh, been wanting to talk about for a while. Yeah. So I recently made a video, uh, Gonga, Bongo, and Cowbell. And so uh, I've been getting a lot of questions like, what beater am I using? Uh, what bell I'm using? And hopefully in the future, I kind of show all the cowbells that I uh, own. Um, for many of you guys that don't know, uh, the cowbells what started my percussion journey. When I was seven years old, my mom bought me a cowbell and yeah, I haven't looked back ever since. And so the cowbell is very special to me and I believe it's an, an enormous tool just just another level of flavor and sauce and spiciness that you could add to many different genres of music when applied properly. Today, I actually just wanted to show the different beaters that I have and the pros and cons on each one. Uh, I mean, I wouldn't say that each one has a con. I just think that each one has a specific purpose for a specific song at a specific moment, man. And so, yeah, just wanted to kind of walk you through that. And so this video is gonna be divided into two parts. The first part is just me explaining the specs of each cowbell beater. And then the second part is gonna be me actually playing each cowbell beater with two cowbells. I wanted to do three, but I actually have eight cowbell beaters, y'all. So it's kind of crazy. And I would think that's if it's eight, that means three clips it's going to be 24 video clips of yeah that's that's kind of crazy and yeah this is an elh bell that um I, I genuinely love it's a very low pitch but i normally use this for outdoor settings because it really projects yeah so um, not gonna use this one. I'm gonna be using a CP uh, percussion uh, bell or Cali percussion bell. I got this. It's a high to mid range, and I got this. I think seven years ago. I think seven or eight years ago. Yeah, it's it's been a while. Um, I remember getting it in New York in Spanish Harlem, and drove just to get this bell. So yeah, needed it, and then. Um, I forgot how old this bell is. And this is the LP uh, Sergio George bell. Um, it's really nice. Yeah, so uh, this I think is over 15, maybe 17 years old. It's a really old bell, but it's very meaningful to me. And so I keep it around and it's just, just still sounds great y'all. So yeah, so I'm gonna be using just these two bells to explain um, how each beater sounds. And so, um, I'm going to be first breaking down each beater and then as well. So you guys know, in regards to the recording, I'm roughly about two feet from the mic and I'm actually going to do two mic setups using the same type of mic. It's the AKG P420 and I'm going to do one on top and then one on below. So we could hear how it sounds on the mouth and as well as the bottom of the bell. And so, um, this is a pretty interesting setup way to to mic but i think it's uh very useful especially if you're going to be recording a demo like this so yeah let me explain each beater so for the first beater is actually a synthetic wood and it's from lp and i think this is my oldest beater um it's pretty used up and yes these actually 
break. I know they probably promote it like they don't break, but but they do. If you wear them out, they're going to be worn out, y'all. It's That's how it is. Things get hit wrong at times and then get worn out. And so this beater, it's very meaningful. I think by far it's one of the, the best beaters out there because it's a good size, it's light, and it's, well, it's pretty durable. And it's balance all the way out, especially when you first get it out the box. Um, so this one I would say has been one that I gradually use a lot more. You could tell I've, I've been using this one a lot. So then it's uh, one from Ernie Venezuela. Um, I'll put that information down below and then links to all of this where you can get um, these beaters. I'm gonna put that down below as well. So if you're interested, but Ernie Venezuela, um, I, he had sent me this man years and years ago and um, this beater is interesting. I love this look. Uh, it's pretty cool, man. And and uh, I think it's uh, kind of those showstoppers. And it's, well, synthetic. I think this, I haven't really used it yet. I think you could tell that I haven't really used it that much on a, on a live setting just because uh, I don't know how much this will stand the test of time. But I think it does, man. I think it's pretty interesting. Uh, I do like the way it sounds and so i've recorded a couple times with this and i really like the, the weight it's balanced as well um feels good in regards to your when you're playing and it's progressing it doesn't feel like you know your arm will get tired your wrist will get tired so yeah next is one that again i actually used a lot this is the mino percussion uh beater um i've had this for i think maybe like three years and uh, one that I actually used a lot. Uh, the one thing, again, this this is synthetic. Um, the one thing, uh, I'm just never been a fan of handles like this, like where it's not as balanced, just because you're adding weight here to the top when you're playing. And so, yeah, you may feel light at the bottom, but you're using a lot more force when you're playing. But like the durability, I don't know, just, just the tone as well. So look at how the tone is and uh, how it can actually progress. So yeah, on to the next two. And these next two are actually really special to me and as well, I, by far one that I've been using a lot more lately. So this is the David Romero beater. I actually used this in the, the video that uh, I'm referencing this beater is really really cool man uh, again it's a synthetic but uh, this beater uh, David Romero if you don't know he is an amazing percussionist man legendary and uh, he put out uh, I remember an instructional uh, DVD in regards to bongo playing as well and so uh, he told me the story the backstory about this and why it's special and uh, he actually was requested to make one by Johnny El Dandy Rodriguez. And so this is kind of based off a baseball bat, you know, so you have kind of a gripping to to be able to play the cowbell. And Johnny Dandy won actually two sizes. He wanted one very slim, light. Um, I would say this is really, really balanced and the tone absolutely love it especially when you want your bell to sing man if you want that thing to go boo like this bell this beaters right here is is really cool but he also made one that's a little bit you know thicker and so with this one uh, as well same specs made it for johnny and uh i would say it's as well just as reliable the thing is that this one this one's weighty this one, this one has some 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 weight to it in regards to when you're playing. So I would suggest that this one is one that you don't really have to kind of like uh, hit the bell as hard. I would just suggest that this is one that if you're just looking for a a bigger sound and tone, that I would you know go with this one. When I was gonna do the recording, um, I was debating on which one to use. And if you saw the recording, there's an actual cowbell solo. And I actually had this in my back pocket thinking, man, should I switch to this one? Because um, I, I don't know, I, the tone was, was very different. And again, we're gonna hear how it sounds in comparison to uh, the bells. You're gonna see how much just that difference makes, man, for, for these two right here. So this next one actually came with my uh, CP Bell um, Cali Percussion, and I believe this is the only wooden uh, beater. And so this one right here, again, I'm not a fan of this 
kind of look because I feel like it throws off the balance. But the only difference between this and the Mino one, this one's really light. This one is probably like the lightest one that I have in comparison to the next one that follows that's very slim. This is very light. And uh, the only thing is that when you have a light beater, um, you you although you have a lighter beater and you could probably play for a lot longer, you do lose that sound. You do lose that, I would say, that projection because of the lightness of the beater. And so I really put this to the test. Um, I use this beater still a lot, especially if I'm playing and I am getting tired, man. Um, you know, it happens. And so it's always good to carry around other tools in case that situation presents itself. So um, again, this one's pretty cool and it came with the CP belt. So these next two are actually from ELH and uh, yeah, this one is a thinner beater and I was true when I said that this one is a little bit heavier than the previous one we just saw. Uh, I actually really like this beater. It's thin and it actually projects, man. It really does sound off when playing it and uh, it's been one that I've used a couple times and I feel, I'm not sure if this is synthetic i'm i'm i think it's real wood um if you know if elio if you can comment to see if this is real or not i would appreciate it man but um i actually really like this beater man i think it's genius again very balanced and i think it's a, a perfect size just to play man um but this other one i wouldn't <laughs> this this is definitely not the same size as this other one and this one as well very very durable uh but this actually weighs quite a bit i would suggest that this one as well like the other uh the Viro metal bell beater um is meant for not a lot of effort you want to project don't want to play as loud um that's when you would use this um when the times i would use it it's when I really wanted to project. But the one thing I could appreciate, it's very well balanced. And uh, again, I don't, I, I think it's synthetic, but it maybe would. I'm not sure, man, but this is by far, out of all of them, probably the most interesting one because, and I think I'm excited for you guys to hear it, just because of, of how it projects. And when you hit it, just the difference. So yeah, we're gonna, play each of these bells and so what i'm gonna do is i'm gonna play first the cp and then the lp and i'm gonna do it just eight at a time and the goal of this recording is not and i repeat it is not to make to see what bell sounds better and what beater sounds better that is not the goal of this i think that each of these are tools that we can use for each gig um, I have these beaters and I use these beaters frequently. Ones more frequently than others only because of the circumstance. But each beater, I believe, serves a specific purpose and uh, has a use for them. So it's not to, to, for you to say, oh, that one, that beater is the best. You know, no, no, no. That is not the goal. The goal is to see which one can, one, maybe is the sound that you like that it gives to the bell. And two, uh, understand that that the tone uh, that gives the beater does add to the sound that you're trying to have, and especially when you're when you're playing bongo and switching to the bell. Again, please take all these specs into consideration. That some are light and some are not as balanced, and then some are a little bit heavier. Um, but by having a little bit more weight, you're getting a bigger sound. So understand all that while you're listening to this, I recommend you put headphones on to be fair while listening to this demonstration. But yeah, let's get into the demonstration.
All right, y'all, really hope you guys enjoyed this video. I know it was a little bit different than the normal tutorial because I'm not really showing you how to do something, more so showing you how certain things can sound. And as well, I personally believe each uh, bongo player that plays the bell um, has a specific tone when approaching the bell as well. Um, I think that that personality and characteristic as well shows in their bongo playing. And so uh, be, be mindful of that. I would consider myself not a pure bongo player. Uh, I know people that just dedicate their life only playing bongo and that that is not me. So please understand that I'm coming from a perspective of just being just somebody that dabbles in all various types of percussion and that that cowbell has a very very special place in my heart man and so yeah be fair in the comments but let me know down below what you guys think which beater was your favorite and uh yeah these two bells sound amazing i love it i love it y'all but all right y'all y'all already know what to do like subscribe and i'll see you guys in the next video have a great day